All right, this is part two. This is part two of my war experience, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Okay. Uh, yeah. Look, look. Don't pay no attention to that stuff on my on my bed. All right, because uh, I often put that stuff right there, so I have easy access to it. Right. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, I'm lazy. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yeah, okay, so this part, part two, right? But I must tell y'all, I participated in Operation Enduring Freedom, too. And that's when we were over in, uh, in Kurdistan for five and a half months uh, supporting troops on the ground in Afghanistan. We didn't even come close to, to loading bombs as much weapons as we did in Iraq. Even though it was not a vacation, it was a vacation compared to uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And we went to Operation Enduring Freedom first in 2002, Kurdistan. Then we went to uh, Kuwait for Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. Right? That's when we really, um, we made the donuts. I'll put it to you like that. We made the donuts over there. Now, let's get straight to uh, part two. Now, part two is the way I felt about um, actually loading the weapons to the people. Now, let, let me tell you something. When you a Marine and all you do is train, 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 you can't wait until you get the opportunity to do it for real. For real? Uh, you talking about motivated. Man, I'm talking about we was loading weapons left and right all day and all night. It was like nonstop, man. Nonstop. And I don't know, like when you are when you, when you are in a peacetime, airplanes go down left and right. You load the weapon and the airplane go down, then you gotta download the weapon and they never get to fly. Let me tell you something. It was hardly a time when an airplane went down. Now, what I mean by went down is that I mean it didn't fly because of some, you know, some mechanical function. I'm talking about they flew pretty much all the time. It was like it was a miracle, and we hardly ever had to drop any any weapons and, and load them on another airplane or something like that. Like they just went out, and I'm telling you, they dropped everything. As far as I can remember, they dropped everything. I'm talking about we would load them on, we would load them across the board. Like have like two, four, six, eight, eight bombs. Have two missiles on on the, on the wing tip. We have two missiles uh, up under the body of the other airplanes. They never fired. Those are those were offensive and defense. I guess you could say air to air missiles. We never fired air to air missiles. But the bombs and the weapons we loaded. We loaded uh, 500 pound, 1,000 pound bombs, 2,000 pound bombs. We loaded rockets. We loaded cluster bombs. We loaded, they call them fire bombs now, but they, it's napalm. Remember that on old Vietnam movies, they had napalm. Napalm is like, it's gasoline, basically. It's kind of like, think about some thick gasoline, right? And then once it hits the ground, it blows up and it splatters like lava everywhere. It, imagine lava on you. Imagine somebody picking up some lava and throwing it on you. That's how that napalm is. Well, it's firebomb, but it's going. But that's just a little bit. This covers what a football field or something like that. Hundred yard football field when it when it hits. Imagine you running on a football field, a airplane coming in coming in on you. Right, they dropping that, and then it's just like Psh, it's at the ten, the twenty, the thirty, the forty, the fifty, this, and and it just cover you. That's what these Iraqis had to deal with. Rockets, bombs, cluster bombs, um, air-to-surface missiles, guided bombs. Man, they had and artillery, but we're just talking about us. Now, imagine you loading that on, loading that on, on, on an airplane, right? Then when you come, then they take off. And then... That airplane that you just loaded all those weapons on come back and ain't nothing left on it. 
Now, you think they just dropped that in, in the ocean? Or they dropped it on a whole bunch of trees with no people in it? Nah, man. No, nah, they dropping it on people. Right? So when you when you loading that stuff and when you are loaded, you're not really thinking about the people that's gonna be on the other side of that. You just because you're so used to doing it for years and years and years, you just going through the motion. You're loading it, they come back, you know it's successful because the pilot said that they they um they have no problem. They high fiving each other. So you know it worked. Then you just go back and load some more. And just keep on going and going and going. You never think about the people who are on the other side. I really didn't think about it until one time I went to a, it was another squad, another 10 over. And I had to do something. And I think it was the CO, the commander officer of that squad that came back from a mission and he had one of those tapes. You had to put a tape. I don't think this is not um, classified information, right? So they had a tape. So you put it in this tape. And it's a video of what he just did. And he's showing the weapon. that. Well, you can't see the weapon drop. But all you see is video. And these crosshairs on, on this building. And you see people walking. Then all of a sudden you see the building blow up. And people blowing up with it. Now you see, it's more like an infrared, so you can see the heat signatures outlines people, and you know somebody just got killed, right? And this just like this just happened like an hour or so ago. With however long, it don't take that really that long to go from Kuwait to Iraq, right? So it just it just like it just happened maybe an hour ago. The hour ago, them people, those people that was walking, they did. So they've been dead for like an hour, and I'm watching them. And all this stuff don't really, man, all this stuff don't really register to you, man, until you actually sit back and think about it. And and, and it was actually years before I actually started thinking about it. And then I got kind of depressed about it, right? And then I was already drinking heavily, man. And drinking heavily, that don't mix when you got all these all these memories. So I'm drinking. And then I start thinking about all this stuff that happened to me in, in Iraq. I'm in Kuwait. And I'm thinking about this stuff is going all through my head. And I'm thinking about, then I just sit there and start calculating how much, how many weapons that I, I loaded on these planes. And then I start calculating how many people that it dropped on. Then I start to calculate how many people that actually was probably killed from the weapons that I helped load. I didn't just load by myself. Other people helped load. You know, you got 500 pounds. You got other people helping you load. This. You got rockets. You got at least another person helping you load rockets. You know what I'm saying? And 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 napalm and all that other stuff. So napalm firebombs. So over and over and over and over again, right? And then, then you just think about like I'm walking around. Hey, right now I'm I'm doing this video. This is in 2003. Man, them people been dead for like 15 years, man. Right? But then, you know, uh, when when I was doing all this stuff, man, it was 2008, 9, 10. That's when I'm drinking, I'm thinking about this stuff, right? And um man, it gets to you, man. It got me got so much to the point where I couldn't even watch um Military movies no more. And I love watching military movies. Like certain movies I can't watch no more. Like the Pacific on HBO. The Pacific. Oh, I can't watch that. I, I, it's certain scenes that just get to me. Because it's, it's it's more drama. It, Rambo, I can watch that all day. Because it's just, it's, it's, it's action. But as soon as you put drama in it and you got people's emotions. Oh, no, dog. I can't watch that. No, man. I start crying. I ain't ashamed to say that, man, because I'm 47 years old, man. You know, I ain't 20-something years old. That bravado, macho, machismo stuff is gone pretty much. Dude, I started crying in the movies, man. I'm like, dude, I don't like this. I'm crying because these dudes dying. But see, the thing about it, the Pacific is, the Pacific is, it's based on a true story. You know, these people actually went through this stuff. So I'm like, nah, man, I can't watch that. Turn it off, man. 
can't watch certain movies. I can't watch Saving Private Ryan because it's the drama. I can't. I can't watch the movie I always used to watch is Full Metal Jacket. That's a whole nother um part three. I told you on ten minutes. So so this stuff it gets to you, man. And I may have to go and talk to some professional people at the VA. Cause there are some things that just I have to deal with, man, because I can't I can't do it no more. I've just gotten too old. And that's finally catching up with me as far as, you know, I can't hold it mentally thinking about all that stuff that I did. Because when I think back on it, man, it just makes me sad that I even had to go through that, man. Yeah, I'm Ura and I'm, I'm, I'm Kill Kill Marine Corps, but you know what, man? Sometimes I feel like I wish I had never even had to do that, man. Because I would never have to live with this. You know, knowing that I'll help kill a whole bunch of people, man. And I'm walking around, they ain't. I know it might sound crazy, but shoot, that's the reality.